You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows, visit electronicmediacollective.com. that had like a little slot right here and it was to set up when people come in to register to vote you ever see like it was like a block yeah it's because of covid and everything they were fucking white and my workers were like we want them to be clear like we want to be able to see through them you know we can't we can't see they're white and i'm like that's the stupidest fucking thing i've ever seen so i'm like if you guys don't want to use them you don't have to so I moved him. Then one of the like rovers, the guy who comes in to check on you, makes sure he came in. He goes, "How come you're not using those dividers?" He's like, "They're there to keep people safe from getting COVID." I'm like, "I know, I had them set up." I said, "But my workers didn't like them because you couldn't see through them. They're just all white." He looks at me and goes, "You know that peels off and it's clear underneath <laughs> it." And I was like, "Wait, what?" I was like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, look at this." He went over to him. It was like like a backer, like the. I'm like, oh my god. I was like, dude, I feel so stupid. <laughs> I was like, don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, so. So that's Scott Malenke working the polls. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. working the poll. Yeah, I felt so fucking dumb. Not as dumb as uh, uh, you, right? Yeah, me five minutes ago, so. Mm-hmm. Everything's copacetic. Yeah, right? it's Everything's okay. I hope I, I hope I sound good now. You sound amazing. You're very loud. I'm very loud, and, very loud. I, and I don't sound robotic or echoey or anything. Uh, I won't know until I edit it. Well, there's a reason why, Adam, that I sound so amazing. Would you like to tell the people why? Uh, we're breaking COVID rules, oh, and we are in the same room together. Don't tell the governor. No, no. he wants to shut everything down, which it might happen. It's probably I've heard, gonna happen. I heard it's gonna be like a serious lockdown, four to six weeks. Yeah, dude, it's gonna happen. So we're doing this now while we can. Dude, four um, to six week vacation. I'm all about it. Yeah, we've been doing we've been doing the show from uh, Discord, and I haven't been happy with my sound. And I've had some of our listeners say the same thing to me. And I just I can't figure it out, man. I, we can't get to the bottom of it. So I said, fuck it. I'm coming over to your apartment, Adam. We're going to set up the old microphones, old school style. And we're doing it caveman way. Yeah, we're going to... I'm going to see about doing this a little bit better. A little bit COVID safer from what we're doing right now. You know, I, I like to think we're pretty safe when we go out in the world doing covid but you know maybe we we can do this safer like the cords are long i can always sit in the living room while we you could. sit in the we kitchen could. and we can do it safer but right now we're doing it old school style i don't get to look into your beautiful eyes <laughs> my cold dead eyes with the <laughs> big ass bags underneath them so as a poll worker scott yeah. i want to ask you because okay. this has been going around and this is not a political talk no this we're not, not a, doing that it's not a political not discussion that. nope it's a current. It's more of a current events thing. It ain't happening. So I've heard a lot of accusations that a lot of the poll watchers in certain areas were being told to stay stay twenty five feet away from a certain polling thing. The you know the you know you know what I'm talking about. You've heard you've heard the story where um, there was poll watchers. You know, make sure everything copacetic, everything make sure everything's really good going on. Yeah. Make sure you know there's no voting fraud, and make sure all the votes get tabulated correctly. But there are certain places that where they were being told to stick, you know, twenty five feet away. Some places were said you got to stay in this other room and watch on surveillance cameras. Is there any legitimacy to any of that? Like, does that does that kind of stuff really happen? So I don't know how they did it yeah, where you well, were. Well, so we have poll workers, and I was a poll worker. People who were there all day helping people to vote, getting them signed in, and there's other people called poll watchers, and pretty much. All that a poll watcher does 
is sits there and watches. It's in their name. Hence the name. To make sure everything goes smoothly and nobody's breaking any rules or any laws or anything. To be a poll watcher, you have to have a certificate. It has to come from either the county party, so Democrats, Republicans, the state party, Democrats or Republicans, or individual candidates can also issue them. Um, there's different rules. You can't have more than three from one party at a time in in the polling place. Makes sense. Um, that, that's pretty much it. With COVID, I can't speak for everywhere, but I can speak for where I worked. They had to stay six feet away. And in the past, that wasn't always the case. They could come up to the tables and they could look at the book and they could you know, check on things. But because of COVID... Yes, there was a new regulation where the poll watchers had to stay at least six feet away. Um, now, what everyone's making a big stink about is what was happening in Philadelphia, which is yeah. our state, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And that was when they were doing the canvassing. And that's at the end of the night or into the next day even where they're going to the county election board and they're counting up all of the ballots. Yeah. That's different from where I worked. I worked at a polling place. So after the polls close, we ship all the ballots and all the results to the main headquarters of that county. So in Philadelphia County, which is a huge fucking county, they have a different limit. And I want to say it was 25 people, and you had to have the same amount. There had to be the exact same Republicans as exact same Jesus. Democrats. So what everybody was making a stink is there were like a hundred Republican poll watchers with their certificates standing outside trying to get in. And it was not a very big place. And to social distance, you couldn't do it. So they're saying we're at capacity, basically. No more people can come in. And they were like, oh, that's voter fraud. You're not letting us in. They're like, "Well, well, no, there's already 25 Republican poll watchers in there. We don't need 125 poll watchers in there. I thought and, they were in the building, but they were 25 feet away. Like, it was a large area, so, and, they were, and they were being kept. The watchers themselves were being kept yeah, 25 feet from the actual voting. I order. wasn't there, so I don't know, but I did hear that, too. Um, maybe that's a different regulation that they had there, because I'm sure there was a ton more people than what we had. Our rules were 6 feet, not 25 feet. I don't know where that came from. But maybe that was one of their regulations, but... To say... Maybe it was voter fraud. I, I, I don't think so, because you had poll watchers <laughs> in there. If they wouldn't have let any Republican or any Democrat poll watchers in at all, then, yeah, they would have had a legitimate argument. But they did let them in. They were in the building. They just weren't letting any more in because they had enough. And people blow it out of proportion. So, no, there's there's no voter fraud happening that's not me thinks the lady doth protest a little too much scott <sighs> I, yeah i i'm not i'm not buying it <laughs> i'm buying it Mm-mm. anyway we are we, we didn't even we didn't introduce ourselves no, we're so we used to just get we jumping into it sometimes we didn't introduce ourselves. i'm adam and one of the other hosts on this podcast his name is scott and he's Ooh. with me Oh, he's here. Yes, he's We're here. We're here. We're here. We're together. Uh, the other one, I he is a host to be named. Host to be named. Let's say that. Host to be named? And I think you brought a special beverage. Did you yeah, not? We haven't done a beer of the show in a very long time. And that's mainly because we forgot what we've used as beer of the show. What we haven't used. Yeah, we've done beer. it so much. So we, so we just said, ah, oh, fuck it. So we're just going to drink whatever. But I brought some beer today. I brought, uh, hold on, let me... Let me just reach over here. Okay, so I brought a variety pack from the Platform Beer Company in Cleveland, Ohio. I love Platform Beer. No, I've I actually, don't think I've ever had any of their beer. Unless, I think you have. And this is one that you made me drink one of. I've made you drink it before because I brought it on the show back when we were doing Beer of the Show. I've been to their brewery in Cleveland, and it's freaking awesome. Um, but this are there's three beers in this in this 12-pack I bought. They're seasonal. They're, they're autumn, they're oh, yeah. fall beers. And they're all made from sweet potatoes, a.k.a. yams. Sweet potatoes and yams are disgusting. 
Ugh. You know, I am not a big sweet potato fan myself. People say that's nature's candy. Fuck you. I don't really like it either, but I do like sweet potato beer. And our, our good friend, Pat, he brews his own beer. He makes a sweet potato beer that is... Uh, mm. Knock your socks off. I love it so Chef's much. Chef's kiss. And because I love it so much, I thought, hey, maybe this would be this would be good stuff. So there's three different kinds in here. The one is called Yammy Yammy. That's the one I'm drinking. The other one is called... How's it, how's it described? There's a little description briefly on the bottom, the orange part right oh, there. Oh, really? There's like Look a little that. brief description of saying like kind of what it's like. like okay. The, the s'mores yammy, which I'm going to crack You're open. You're having is, the s'mores yammy. It's decadent, smooth, and slight, slightly spiced. Okay. Mine is the yammy yammy, and it is slightly spiced, silky, and luscious. Ooh. Luscious? Wow, Ooh. what a great descriptive word. Remember Luscious Jackson? Yes. Yeah, okay. And then the third one that we'll probably have next is called candied pecan yammy, and its description says nutty, caramelized, and fall spiced. So that's the uh, the Yammy Pack from the Platform Beer Company. We're going to uh, enjoy that for the duration of the show. Well, you also had a whole bunch of rum over there earlier. I so. had a glass of rum, oh. is what I had. One one rum drink. Where's the rum gone? Well, it's gone over on the counter because I'm drinking the Yammy right now. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so you've been you've been sipping on yours. Why don't you go first for your review? I of like what it. it. Is. I like it, but to me, it tastes like a regular sweet potato beer, which I just mentioned that I very much like sweet potato beers. Yeah. It's it's sweet. Um, but this one was the more calm of the three in there, and I started with it. I'm curious to try the one you have and the other one, because I think that it seems a little more exotic. Mine's pretty much a sweet potato beer, a yam beer. If you've had that before, that's what this is. And it's good. It's sweet. It's a little bit heavy. I feel like I couldn't drink a lot of these. It's not like where you can like funnel Bud Light Lime yeah. and like go through a case of it. Uh, but this one's a you know you can sip on it and have a few, and then, then it feels like you're full, it, like you've had an entire yeah. meal. You know, it sits there, which is fine, which is fine. So oh, it is pretty heavy. It's yeah. a little heavy. Yeah, yours is heavy too. It's a little heavy. It's got a little weight to it. What's the what's the flavor like? I'm gonna have that one next. I think. Um, it's the s'mores, and I believe I said it was decadent, smooth, and slightly spiced. So. Well, that's what the can says. What do you say? Oh, you want to give me my review? I mean, sure. Um, we're doing that. Yeah. I I can I can taste the spice a little bit. I don't know why they call it a s'mores yammy. Yeah, I really. It- I really don't know why they call it. It doesn't. I was hoping no chocolate, I no marshmallow, it, no I gram. picked it hoping it would taste like you know me. I like a wild, little wow factor. I was hope picked it so I could be like, hey, this is a little s'mores like. It's got mm-hmm. a little chocolate, little marshmallow added to it. <clears throat> Guess what? It doesn't taste like that at all. Oh well. I think I can taste the yams a little bit. Okay. You don't like yams? No, I don't. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna muscle this one down, but I don't like it that much. It's not that good. See, I'm not a big coffee guy. I can drink it, but I, it's, neither am I. I don't like coffee. But there's coffee beers that, to me, I like. They're they're like a porter or a stout that have coffee brewed in. I don't taste the coffee, so I like those. Yeah. I don't like yams or sweet potatoes. But to me, like when you brew a beer with it, it almost just gives it sweetness. And I really like sweet beers. So, I don't know. Well, we'll see. But uh, that's the platform. Platform. The beer of the show. Beer oh, of the show. Good well, you know what? Show whoever whoever drinks the third one, they have to give a quick review of that too. So okay, we'll just whoever, we'll, breaking news. We'll, we'll cut it. Breaking then. news. Yes. Speaking of breaking news, uh, let's just get it out of the way now. The sad news of the week. I think the sad news that everybody's talking about. It's news that I honestly did not think I was going to hear because I thought this person was making a recovery based on what they had. Um, uh, Alex Trebek died. Alex Trebek. Yes. I was shocked. He was. He. Yeah retired briefly from jeopardy because he was dealing with what was it cancer yeah pancreatic cancer i I think it was something like that yeah Mm -hmm. and he was doctors are saying he's making recovery like he's doing he's responding well to treatment i was like oh sick i heard that for a while i heard he was doing well (laughs) and i also heard he taped his last jeopardy show two weeks before he died really I, i heard that yeah so 
And they're going to play his last episodes. Um, his last episode that he recorded, I think, is going to air the week of Christmas. So, Oh, don't do that. Yeah, they're going to do that. They're going to do that. That's sad. So, uh, yeah, that's real sad. He was a freaking legend, man. He was. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not a huge game show guy. I, I like him just as much as anybody. But uh, Jeopardy was the one. Jeopardy was the one. My grand, my late grandfather, who just died a couple years ago, he was a Jeopardy nut, man. He had to be home every night, his TV on, for Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy, basically. I, I like Jeopardy, but I didn't watch it as much as most people because it made me feel stupid. <laughs> so I did not entertain me. We actually participated in a tiny Jeopardy tournament I was gonna some bring that years up. back. I was going to bring that up. And yeah. it was a very embarrassing point in my life because, as you know, as you know, every Thursday, Scott, I'm right. not good at trivia. I suck. I have knowledge. I went to college and then I went back, so I've got some knowledge. But the problem is I'm just not good at trivia. I, just, I have a very niche set of knowledge in my head that I can pull out for trivia. Like every now and then, I'm like I'm like the diamond in the rough. I'm like Aladdin coming out of the cave of wonders with, oh, it's this movie, or I've seen this obscure thing that they're talking about, or this band or whatever from the '90s. That's like a that's like a emo grunge band or something like that. Like every now and then, I I, I pop up, but like I spend most of the time playing card games on my <laughs> desktop while everybody else is talking about it because I'm like I don't even know anything about this category, let alone. And in fairness. Who, the person that does it um, has been doing it for us. It is very awesome that she has taken the time to put it together of her own free will. Like She's not getting any benefit other than right. people participating, which is great of her. I will say this. She is a very smart person with an even nicher set of oh, yeah. knowledge than me. Oh, yeah. And I don't know half the things, topics that she brings up. Like I know nothing about half the topics she brings up. And I'm like... Mm. Well, well, to let the people know, we Adam and I are in a trivia league, and we started forever ago, and it was at a local brewery where you went in person, and we had some drinks and ate some food, and would play, would play trivia, bar trivia, which is a common thing, and it was right by where you go to school and where you work, and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing that. And then COVID. COVID happened, so they moved the trivia from this bar to online via Zoom, and we continued to play our whole team, and we've been sucking lately. <laughs> we've been okay. In <laughs> fairness, though, in fairness, though, when we would play at the bar, there was actual stakes. Okay, if you yes. won, you would win bar tokens yeah. and stuff like that. Doing this online, there's no stakes no. other than glory. Right, and we're not we, uh, nerdiest reference I can make. We're not Klingons. We don't give a shit about glory. <laughs> We don't care about glory. We so every single time, even if it's the worst topic we've done of the entire night, we're like, bet it all, you throw it all down. Don't care about glory. Dishonor yeah. on your house. <laughs> Dishonor on you. <laughs> Dishonor on your cow. <laughs> no man, that's I, I enjoy it. I like I it's like fun. Doing, it's... I like doing trivia. And actually, I'm going to bring that up later in the show because something came up. But we'll, we'll hold on to that. Okay. But as you mentioned, we did do a. A Jeopardy tournament, an in-person Jeopardy tournament. We talked about it on the show for. I almost forgot ago. that's how we got into this topic. <laughs> Ever ago, yeah. We did. We did a. We did a Jeopardy, and um, I ended up getting third place. I think your buzzer was broken. Right? Yeah, yeah, let's say my, your, your buzzer was broken. Let me tell you something. That was the most. Imbe- I, the dude should have just let it go. Honestly, like yeah. I had no answer for anything. And then in the middle of the Jeopardy game, he's like, uh, "Can we stop for a second? Is Adam's buzzer broken?" And I'm like, "You motherfucker!" <laughs> I, I just looked. and I was like, "No, it's it's fine. It's good. Click, click, click. It's good. Don't okay. worry about it. Just go, <laughs> steer the camera away yeah. from me, please." <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I wanted to I wanted to bring up uh two of our friends who. Have both been on the show, listened to the show, have tried out for Jeopardy before. Mm. And uh, actually three, but I'm, I'm getting the third one. Uh, Pat Lackey. Friend of the who, show. Who is on, he's been on the show. Who's on our trivia team, actually. Yeah, he's, he's brilliant. He's Pretty an smart. extremely... He's the guy... Every single There's those few times where he messaged out, okay, here's a trivia, here's a Zoom code for it and everything like that. And you and your wife will be like, I don't know if we're going to make it in time. Or it, we might be like ha- halfway through the sh- mm-hmm. thing. And Mike Deloney, who has been on the show many mm-hmm. times and is also part of it, he is very lax in showing up because he's work a lot of the time. Yeah, so yeah. Um, every single time you do that, I'm like, you motherfucker. 
motherfuckers. Because I know for a fact, if I get on there, I have no answers. It's all Patrick all the time. And I feel useless. I feel Adam, worthless. Adam, even with us, it's pretty much all Patrick But at all least you time. make it entertaining. <laughs> so there's so a difference. anyway, Pat Pat has tried out for it. And he's he's gotten far. Um, also, uh, our friend Mike <laughs> Muha. Also, one of the smartest people in the room. Yeah, uh, he's, we know a lot of smart He's also people. tried out for Jeopardy. Um, but the third person I want to bring up is the person who hosted the trivia show that we did, who's also been on the show. Yes, sir. And that's my friend Mike Mondak. I forgot he was on the show. Mike oh, Mondak was on the show. Damn, you and have a memory of a steel I do, ball. I do, I guess so. Mike's but leaking like a pirate ship. My, my buddy, my my buddy Mondak, he, he ran the Jeopardy tournament that we played in, and he's tried out for Jeopardy umpteen times. Literally, the biggest Jeopardy fan there probably is. Yeah, At he least hosts, I he hosts that Jeopardy tournament. He, <clears throat> Alex Trebek was his idol. I actually messaged him and I'm like, "Hey, sorry for your loss, buddy," because that he <sighs> did he ever meet Alex Trebek? Yes, he actually met him twice. Nice, met him twice. Um, At least he met his idol. Yeah, so went to, went to a tape. It went to a couple tapings, but it just oh, man, it's sad. Like. Like the time, like I met Leonard Nimoy. I've talked about it on the show. I shook his hand. I never washed the hand again. It's probably got COVID all yeah, over. Yeah, as you say, but, um, put that hand in your pocket. I got a glove but, back here but, for you, buddy. But anyway, like I know how he feels. Like, and then when Leonard Nimoy died, I was I took that one hard. And, That's how I felt when Kevin Smith had his heart attack. I love. Mm-hmm. I am a huge. I don't know who's a bigger Kevin Smith fan, you or me. But I'm a huge. I would Kevin say Smith you. Fan. I I got on the ground floor a long time ago, back in the nineties. Yeah. But I think you've surpassed me in fandom. Love the guy. Love yeah. the guy. But I love him so much, and I've never met him before. So that's like my big thing. When he had a heart attack, I was like, "Oh my god, that's horrible." Yeah, well, those comic cons we go to, you know, it's like fucking pay fifty <laughs> bucks to to get a real quick photo with these people, and it's always like, I'm not going to pay. 50 bucks. I'm going to pay 20 bucks well, to get a we, picture. We almost did. We almost did it that one time with uh, um, uh, Jonathan Franks. We almost we, did. Uh, we almost did, yes. But we didn't. That's, that's if we were at a Comic-Con that Kevin Smith was at, and he goes to a lot of them. Yes. So that's not out of the question. If we were there with him, I think I'd do it. I would absolutely do it. 100%. I would do it for, I would, do it I, would for get, I would pay for the picture and everything. I would. I would, I would. Absolutely 100%. Yeah. So... Patrick and then, Stewart. Patrick and then Stewart, I would I mention, might... casually mention that we have a podcast, and because he <laughs> loves podcasts, he would gush about podcasts with us and maybe yeah. give us a shout out. I don't maybe, know. Maybe he's I listening. Don't know. Maybe he's listening right now. Or Kevin, maybe... baby, boobla, let's do this. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's really sad. Lost another one, um, Alex Trebek. And I did see a funny meme. It, it was a little bit too soon. It was a little bit too soon, but. It was a picture of Sean Connery. It's 2020. Nothing's too soon. It was it was a picture of Sean Connery. And, and the above caption said, when you beat your rival to the pearly <laughs> gates. And below it, it said, suck it, Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> you know, it's good. It's good hearted comedy, though. Yeah. It's not. It wasn't bad. It's good hearted. So, um, it's sad, though. It is very sad. I was. Mm-hmm. It, it's more sad, I think, because... We have the rumors of him making a comeback. We yeah. have rumors of him yeah. possibly beating cancer. So was it was it the cancer that got him, or was it oh, like something I, else? I imagine, yeah, it, uh, he died to the cancer. Yeah, but uh, I, I've seen some interesting things about who would replace him on Jeopardy. I think I've seen some. I've seen one interesting thing that I, I think is legitimate. One, so I was thinking. I even said this to Pat. I'm like, it's got to be Ken Jennings, right? <laughs> I was thinking to myself, it's got to be Ken Jennings, and you, people who don't know. Ken Jennings is one of the top three, I believe. Yeah. Longest Jeopardy champions of all time. And I've seen him come back for like tournaments of champions. And he's stuff. so good that it makes you so think he's got, a, he's got an earpiece in his ear. That's he's how good he so is. so good. So good. Now, I don't know how his rapport is and like how. Because Trebek. Oh, he's, would, he's probably a cunt. He probably. Trebek was hilarious. Yeah. Trebek's back and forth with, with Trebek the Trebek was a cunt, but in a funny way. Like, like he was. <laughs> he was. Funny as hell, like, I remember, I can't remember the exact, like, what he said, but there was an interaction he had with a uh, contestant one time who was, she was a super nerd. Like, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, super nerd. 
and he made some offhanded sarcastic one. comment. And she did like LARP and stuff. Yeah, yeah, she was LARPing, and he he made like some weird comment about it that like was insulting, but it was funny at the same time. And I was like, only Alex Trebek can say that and not yeah. get, not offend anybody. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, so I was thinking Ken Jennings should be the guy to take over. But like I said, I don't know how his, how his personality would yeah. be. Because you got to be a little bit funny. you got to be a little bit witty. He'd be charming. Yeah, I mean, Trebek was a genius. Yeah, Trebek was charming. so smart in his own right. So smart, being smart is part of it. But then I saw something on the internet. you got to roll 20 on the persu- persuasion skill. That's a D&D. That's a yeah, D&D I, I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> so, I feel like the, the name that I see being tossed around... Makes me want this person more than Ken Jennings now. I hope you say the name. LeVar Burton. That's exactly what I was going to say. That's exactly. I saw that the other day and I was like, that is the perfect choice. I think it's kind of the perfect choice. He's charming, fun, funny. Like he's a great guy. And he taught me how to read. So please. (laughs) Yes. He taught all of us. Yes. He taught all of us how to read from reading Rainbow. Plus, if he's half as smart as the character he played on Star Trek The Next Generation... He's going to be smart enough to be Jeopardy. I don't think anybody's half as smart as Jordy LaForge. Jordy LaForge was the smartest person in a, a ship of he smart people. He could repair people. data. Let's put it that yes. way. He knew how to fix data. He's he's super smart. Yeah, super duper smart. And I love him. I think that would be a great choice. Uh, that's a, that's an awesome choice. There's also a rumor that, that they want a woman. They want a, a lady to host. Um, I, didn't hear, I didn't see any names, but... Do we know any smart... It sounds insulting. Oh, it does it sound sounds very insulting. insulting. I but, know where that was going. Like, like, oh, pump like, the brakes, Adam. We know. Like, who is... There's an actress who's like a biochemist or something. Oh, like from that. Uh, the Big Bang Theory. Is Wait. Oh, uh, oh uh, Sheldon's... Sheldon's, Sheldon's wife. Sheldon's yeah. girlfriend, wife, whatever. I didn't finish it. I didn't uh, get to the Blossom, point Blossom, right? She was in Blossom. I forget. I, 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 I Amy Fairfower. Yeah, Fair, I'm going to look up the real Whatever her actress name. name is, forgive me for not knowing because... Yeah, I've heard that would be great. She would be awesome. Yeah, she's she's funny as hell in that show. There's another one that there's like a movie star actress who has like a degree in like science or like like physics or something. I can't remember who it is, but I'm pretty sure hmm. the person you think of, um, I can't pronounce this. Mayim Bielik? Mayim Bielik? It's I can't. I, is that, I'm sorry. Is that her from Big Bang Theory? Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't. Yeah, pronounce I love it. her. I can't pronounce I be, the name. I'm sorry. I would be happy with her. She'd be great. Yeah, she would she'd be, be great. Good. Because you got to be funny. You got to be smart. You got to check all the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. She would. She would be great. Here we are talking about a replacement. Trebek's body probably isn't even cold yet. <laughs> We're you know what? He would be happy for the show to go on. How long did yeah. he host that fucking show? He be he want the show to go on with a respectful <clears throat> host, right? With somebody who does that. So uh, some somebody like her or the other actress whose name I can't think of who has like a physics degree or some bullshit like hmm. that. Whatever. Um, she's like an Anne Hathaway type person. I don't know. Not Anne Hathaway though. Oh, um, Natalie Portman. Isn't yeah, it? she's she's, she's, got, like yeah, a, Natalie, she's got like a she's got like a chemistry degree yeah, or some fuck shit. That though, I don't want Natalie Portman. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. I just, She's fine, I guess. She's okay. She is fine. You're right. She is fine. Well, yeah, that too. <clears throat> so yeah, she went to Harvard or something, right? Yeah, she's super smart. Or MIT or someplace. She's, like, yeah, she's she's like dumb smart. Like it's dumb how smart she is. I think so. Like she could probably save us from COVID if she really wanted to. Yeah. But the rum's gone. The rum. Why is the rum gone? Why is all the rum gone? Anyway, pour one out for one's homies. Alex yeah. Trebek. We just talked about Sean Connery last week. And like serendipitous, mm-hmm. like it couldn't be more perfect, and it sucks, but it couldn't be more perfect that Al Shrek died, and then we get all the great memes of F- SNL yeah. stuff. Yeah. It sucks, but hey. Uh, shoot us an email at forwarddistraction at gmail.com, or send us a message on Facebook or Twitter. Tweet us at podcastfyd. If you have a choice that you think would be a good replacement to host Jeopardy. Okay, so I opened the third beer. I'll talk about it real quick because we said we would. This is the uh, candied pecan yammy. And the little bar says nutty, caramelized, and fall spiced. Um, it's good, but it's so sweet. Really? It's very much sweeter than the last one I had. Yeah, it's like it's like making my butthole pucker up a little bit. <laughs> it's, I can feel the cavities forming in my mouth because it's that sweet. Scott, you did not tell me that this 
this beer had was 7.9% alcohol. Yeah, this one's 8%. You did not tell me this. This one's 8. <laughs> I was not going wondering, anywhere. I was wondering why I was feeling the way I was feeling. Yeah. Like I if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have had that rum beforehand. The well, Plato level is 18.7. We'll be spitting philosophy left and right here in a minute. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we get in, we're going to get into Course of Cinema here in a minute. Um, but before we get into that, <clears throat> I, have a, I have a slightly funny article that I'm going to read off here. And I'm going to catch your opinion on this, see if it tickles your fancy or if okay. you're just like, meh. So here's the title of the article. And this is from September of this year, September 2020. Um Bear in mind, this is on the Fox News website, but I've heard this story uh, told elsewhere. Yeah, you know, I watch Fox News every now and again. I'm not going to judge. <laughs> Actor Jimmy Walker alleges Freddie Prince once tried to kill John Travolta. Wait, 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 wait. Actor... FPJ. <laughs> FPJ. Not Freddie Prince Jr. Senior. Freddie, Freddie Prince, Prince Senior. Once tried to kill John, John Travolta. All right, we're going to read the article. Wait, wait, okay. We're going to read this article, okay? okay? Freddie Prince allegedly, this is Jimmy Walker's account of it, because apparently he was on a recent documentary or something like that. He said, Freddie Prince allegedly tried to off John Travolta. What do you think he tried to off him with, Scott? A little trivia, a little trivia that you can't know. Candlestick in the foyer. Uh, that's funnier, but okay. no. With a crossbow. A crossbow? <laughs> yeah. Um, the Good Time star reportedly made the shocking revelation in a new documentary um, for the Showtime series The Comedy Store that alleges uh, that Prince grew up, grew upset with Travolta after the actor beat him out in landing a teen magazine cover in the 70s. So John Travolta landed a teen magazine cover in the 70s and Freddie Prince was so pissed off about that because he wanted to probably uh, have the cover or some shit like that. Um, he said that Prince phoned him up one day and said, We've got to kill John Travolta. That's what he apparently he said. He says, I'm going to kill this guy. I'm the biggest TV star. I said, and, J and Jimmy Walker said, well, a lot of people are on TV. I'm on TV. Didn't fucking matter at all. So Walker says Prince took even took umbrage with his own remarks and fumed back at Walker. You're not bigger than me. I'm the biggest guy. I'm the best guy. Everyone knows me. I'm the funniest guy. Sounds like somebody went to Trump school. <laughs> a little joke for you Trump University was it around yeah. the 70s I yeah I, I don't know about that it okay. might have been a few decades earlier um, apparently what they did was they um, he was he was unable to talk Prince off of the ledge from what they said and so they ended up driving to Travolta's apartment but apparently Travolta wasn't home so this Freddie Prince shot three arrows into Travolta's door yeah yeah it was uh it's nuts that's crazy yeah that's kind of it's kind of the end of the story but apparently there's a story of freddie prince uh going with jimmy walker and freddie prince shooting three crossbow bolts essentially yeah. into travolta's door i want this i want this story to become a movie okay i want quentin tarantino to direct it so we know it's gonna be all right so we already know it's gonna be three and a half hours long we know it's gonna be that when long. When Tarantino directs this movie, because you know how he takes like an actual historical event and just slightly. So changes what you're saying it. is he kills John Travolta. Yes, but it turns out John Travolta is actually his character from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah, Travolta's <laughs> gonna be in the movie. Travolta's not gonna play Travolta because he's got because he's gotta be younger. But Travolta's going to play somebody else in the movie. Because he's in Tarantino movies. Yeah. And I want to see Freddie Prince Jr. Not playing his father, Freddie Prince, But also playing someone else in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think this could be But incredible. Jimmy Walker has to play Jimmy Walker. Jimmy Walker will be playing <laughs> Jimmy Walker. Yes. This is great shit. This is great shit. And it's going to be two and a half hours long. And <laughs> half the cuts are going to be a feat in driving. <sighs> <laughs> driving there's gonna be a great soundtrack of old 70s songs yeah it's gonna be like the best. obscure gonna... deep cuts from people we've never heard and everybody's gonna everybody's gonna pull up the uh, album on spotify because yeah, that's, right. that's what they're gonna listen to oh man what a great story yeah i heard this story and i died i about <laughs> died about funny. that story that's funny anyway lightheartedness let's get into it chorus of cinema chorus of cinema for those of you that do not know what chorus of cinema is we started this a couple months ago um 
Scott and I, if you've been longtime listeners, we have movies that we've seen that the other host has not seen. Mm -hmm. And I decided, well, we talked about it, and we said, you know what? Let's start a new segment where I pick a movie that you've never seen, that I have seen, and I make you watch it, and vice versa. So that's kind of what the premise is. So we've each picked a movie. Let's remind the listeners for what this week's movies are for Course of Cinema. I chose for you to watch the Halloween smash hit... QB Halloween starring Adam Sandler mm-hmm. in the Adam Sandler verse. Mm-hmm. And you picked for me uh, a Mighty Wind, a mockumentary. I don't remember what year it came out. Um, I could look mm. it up, but I'm a little lazy. 03, 02, something like that. <clears throat> something stupid. Like back in the good times. Stupid. Back in the before times. Back the, in the... the way back times. <laughs> yeah, early the early aughts. Yeah. Okay. So I want to. I'll let you go first. Okay. I'll let you talk about your movie first. But I want to give a little. Uh, little caveat because i made a boo-boo scotty pulled a boner okay what happened was that, that's a funny <laughs> reference too okay, getting to so um what, what happened was, unintentional too by the way that's incredible um so i made a list when we first started doing course of cinema he did not check it twice i didn't I, that's the problem i wish i could have checked it twice. <laughs> so i made a list of movies that i enjoy that I know Adam hasn't seen, and I looked on the streaming services, Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, and Prime Video, to see if they were on there, because I know that's what Adam has to watch them. And I made a list of like 10 or 12 different ones. Well, we've been using this list for a couple months now, and yeah. I've, been, I've been working my way down. And I got to a mighty wind. When I first made this list, it was on Hulu. So when I we did the show last week, I said, oh, you're going to watch the movie A Mighty Wind. It's on Hulu. Well, I haven't seen it in several years. I'm like, you know, I'm going to re-watch it so it's fresh in my mind, too. So I can talk about it with Adam. I pulled up my Hulu and went to watch it. Adam, it wasn't on there. No. So from the time I made the list till now, somewhere in the middle there, it was removed from Hulu. And now I'm like, shit. Checked all the other streaming services, not on there. I'm like, all right, this is on me. I got to find a way to make Adam watch it. So I would have gone to my uh, my family video, which I've talked about many times on this show. Oh, yes. How I am old school and I still have an account at a video rental place. Well, I don't remember if we talked about this on the show. We might have. I know you and I have talked about it in person, but if we talked about it on the show, forgive me, I can't remember. But it's a sad day. My family video store has closed. To the surprise of absolutely no one. Because every I'm time... sorry, were you expecting a shocked look on no, my face? I'm sorry. Because every time Say it I again, go Scott. There, Say it again. No, no one's surprised. It closed. My family, <laughs> my family video, my local one close to my house, closed. And um, I went the last week it was open to, to see if there was any good deals. Curious, you know if it closed because of COVID? Is that the reason? Um, Is that the final nail in the So I, I know the people there and I talked to them and they said... That was part of it. I mean, you called this years ago. I mean, when Hollywood videos and blockbusters started going in the way of the dodo, for some reason, family video was keep on keeping on. And they're just hanging by a moment, man. Nobody goes to those anymore. Let's face it. Everybody does Redbox or they stream it or, you know. So they're a dying breed. I'm just sentimental. Nothing says nostalgia like walking into a video store seeing the rise i don't dick is disagree with you i miss those times i honestly do miss those times there was something something comforting Mm -hmm. and relaxing about walking into a movie store and seeing the racks of videos and then seeing the new release wall yes that had sections of just the same movie but you're like what's new out let's check it out and you'd go over there and you'd see it's like oh my god this is new i remember there were times whenever i would bring beautiful women over to my house and i would have to rent a movie and i'd be like right. let's go find a movie and see what that makes... was like date night yeah. let's let's get me go... a scary movie so that i could be like oh we're watching a spooky movie yeah let's wink, go to wink, wink, fucking nudge, blockbuster nudge. let's just walk around i remember being a kid going there with my dad and like that's a great memory as a kid ah oh, but but sadly their days are numbered w- what few remain their days are numbered so my store has closed, and part of it was COVID, and part of it was just the environment that 2020 happens to be. So it closed. 
then it hit me. There's another family video in near Greenville. You know where Greenville is. For those yeah. of you who listening, it's about a half hour. Yeah, it's, it's the butt crack of Pennsylvania. It's about a half hour away from where we live. Not super far, but obviously not that close. There's a family video store in Greenville. Still operating. I went there one time. One time ever I did go there. I had to rent a movie for my wife, Chris. She's a school teacher. She was doing a lesson on the Iditarod dog sled race that happens up in Alaska every year. Yeah, we've all know that race. She wanted to show the movie Balto. Remember the animated film Balto? I think I've seen it once. Well, I'm glad you've seen it because if you would have said no, it's on the <laughs> course of cinema. Balto's a fucking amazing cartoon. And I loved it as a kid. Kristen loved it. That's why she wanted to show her kids. But we didn't have it. It, was no, it wasn't on any streaming at the time. She's like, so you need to go rent it. So I went to my family video store. They didn't have it. So I went up to the counter where the people I know is, and they did their little search. They said, oh, good news. They have it at the Greenville family video. I'm like, I'm there. Got in my car, drove a half hour, went to rent the movie Balto, bring it up to the counter, got it, brought it up to the counter. And I'm like, oh, I told my account. But they said, you don't have an account here. I said, oh, I don't go to this one. I go to the one in Hubbard, which is mine. They said, oh, well, it's just individual per store. I'm like, oh, They're like, well, you can just set up it's a free account. You can just set one up and rent this. Video. Yeah, why not? I'm like, okay. So I set the right, set it right the fuck up there at Greenville. Got it. Rented Balto. They used it in school. I returned it. That's the first and last time I've ever been to the Greenville family video. Well, now my Hubbard store's closed. I'm going to motherfucking Greenville to look for a mighty <laughs> win for you. I drove all the way there. I walk in there with a smile on my face. I'm like, I'm gonna go up to this guy. I don't know anybody there, and I'm like. Well, I still I'm gonna, I, I was trying to gonna try to explain the story to them how I have an old account there. But bad news. They didn't have a mighty wind. It wasn't there. <laughs> I checked everywhere. It didn't exist. I asked them. No, sorry, we don't have it. So I drove all the way to Greenville to get skunked. I checked at Walmart thinking oh, that might be like a five dollar movie bin. Searched through oh, there. Yeah. Didn't see it. Didn't see it. So at this point, I, I'm down the dumps. Do, do I let the listeners, the Fury Distraction, down? Do I pick a new movie for you to watch? And I said, you know what I'm going to do? I said, Adam, I'm going to pay you. Scott, I'm going to tell you right now, don't give me your money. I'm going to give you the money. On the show, I'm giving him, I don't know how much you want, so I'm going to wait. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, I said, don't give me money. It, yeah, first of all, I don't like dealing in cash. It's all COVID uh, contagious oh, and shit like that. Him. So listen I don't him. want to deal with cash, but also at the same time, it was three bucks. I'm not concerned about three dollars. I have three dollars. Tell you what, tell you what, here's what you do. Instead, when this nonsense is all over in six to eight to ten to twelve to fourteen to twenty-four months, when the vaccine comes and we can all go back to mm-hmm. normal life, just buy me a beer. You got it. Buy me a beer. Next time we go out. Right. As soon as we we're, as soon as you get the vaccine, I get the vaccine, we both get the booster shot. There right to the bar, you buy me a beer. You got it. Good deal. to so, go. So I had to make Adam I broke the rules. And he had to rent, rent on Prime Video? Or yeah, Prime Video. Yeah. Yeah, it was three, like I said, three so, bucks. Three bucks, not so that much. So he rewatched it, so. That's 12 quarters. So I fucked up. I, I'm sorry, all the listeners who were like, oh, I'm going to go on Hulu and watch along. In with fairness, you. I did fuck up one other time before, too, whenever I gave you Bad Ben, and you had to search for an app in order to even watch that movie. So but in I, fairness. But, but it didn't cost me anything other than time searching, and that app is horrible. Oh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd watch four minutes of the show and then it would like buffer and oh, it was awful. But anyway, I watched. Yeah, you know, probably made that a computer science student in college. Yeah, it's probably who made it. So, anyway. so why don't you tell us what you thought of the movie uh, A Mighty Wind? It is a mockumentary mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like those old school like where are they now kind of rock. Mm-hmm. Uh, documentaries that they have, but a mockumentary about folk music. It reminds me kind of a little bit of uh, Spinal Tap. I was going to say, Spinal Tap sounds, sounds like a... Spinal Tap's better, but this one... Yeah, yeah. so um, it's it's got a lot of a lot of big names I said, like Michael McLean. It's got Eugene Levy in it. I was happy to see her. Catherine O'Hara. There's a lot of really awesome names I saw in it. Um, Jane Lynch is in Jane it. Lynch, John yeah. Michael Higgins. They were great in it. <laughs> um... Here's my what I'm going to say about it. It had a lot of really good, funny moments, but I didn't dig it. So it's very dry humor. It's the it's the <laughs> driest humor. And here's the thing. I usually like dry humor, 
<laughs> I'm worried I didn't get some. Of, I'm worried I'm one of those guys that just didn't get some of the jokes. There was a few that I there was a few that I got. There was a few that I caught like five seconds later, and I just laughed out loud. <laughs> um, like when they were talking about the cult that they were in, yes, the, the, yes. the, the color cult where the they, they worship yeah. colors and shit like that. I was like, that's awesome right there. That's amazing. <laughs> Um, yeah, Jane Lynch was pretty good. The yeah. end, whenever the one dude had like a uh, sex change or something like that, and he yes, went from being yes, a man to a woman. Yes. And the, just the reaction, the two guys just trying to accept it, like, oh, uh, yeah, okay, uh, okay, here we go. Um, that was funny. <laughs> it, it had a lot of good, funny moments. Mm-hmm. It it just didn't grab me. I, I think I, I think what it was was it was a mockumentary, and I like mockumentaries sometimes, but I like ridiculous mockumentaries. Like, Borat is a very good ridiculous mockumentary that goes out into the real world um and yeah so i I, if you're gonna give me a mockumentary i kind of prefer like the hardcore ridiculous ones like that um this is this this is a i had a good time watching it it wasn't bad Mm -hmm. like i didn't regret watching i didn't it was it's actually nicely short too it's very nicely short it's not a long one yeah it's like an hour and 20 minutes or some Mm -hmm. shit like that um so it's, it's a very good pace if it was any longer, I'd be like, "This shit, this movie's kind of shit." But um, it's it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I really liked. Um, was it Ricky and Mickey, or wow, I can't remember the the characters' names. Oh, geez, it's been forever. Uh, Mar- Marty and Mickey, or they they but they were rhymed. They the names were rhymed. So I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look. I have the MDB right here. That was here. Eugene Levy. It was Eugene M- Levy. I think was my favorite character. Mitch and Mickey. Mitch and Mickey. <clears throat> Yeah, that oh, that man. whole that whole sequence that they went through that was, uh, you, I love Eugene Levy. Yeah, he's, he's great. great. And he's, yeah. he's very great in this, and that he he's like Ozzy Osbourne, where like he can sing and you can understand everything he says, but when he talks, he's very nervous and like he stutters a lot. He's like um 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 I um uh, um so um 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 right. like that kind of that kind of stuff, and he's very confused, and it seems like he's, it seems like. Mi- uh, Mickey might be the only woman he's ever had sex with because he is hard on for her. <laughs> like they were, they were a married couple for years, and it turned out to be like abusive relationship or whatever. Um, but it seemed like he was obsessed with her. Like, like he never got over her even whenever they broke up. So um, it was funny. The funny characters. I would, I would recommend. I, it's, it's a fun little watch. If, yeah, you, if you're into fun. mockumentaries and you like, and you can dig a little folk music some little funny folk music because so, they took the folk music what i liked about it is they took it very seriously and that they didn't make like hard, like scary movie joke folk music it was like you could see that being real folk music that people yeah. listen to cards on the table maybe one of the reasons why i like this movie so much is the folk music folk music it, isn't isn't bad sometimes i mean the music in this movie like if you listen to the lyrics that were written for these songs they're hilarious, okay. The fo- and, and and I dig folk music. I'm not gonna. My my wife hates it, but I I like it. But this oh, man, it's very dry. It's it's almost on the Wes Anderson or uh, Cohen Brothers dry comedy level. It's and, almost yeah. like that. It's almost yeah. a little drier than that, honestly. Yeah, and uh, and I because I like Wes. I love Wes Anderson, and I like the Cohen Brothers. Mm-hmm. So it's almost a little drier than that, right? Honestly. Right. So, but I mean, it's it's in that realm of that kind of humor, which again I get. But if you, but there's a lot of people who don't. There's a lot of people who don't. So yeah, it's it's a very niche audience. I think that would like right. it. But it's good. I so, enjoyed it. If you like that kind of stuff, give it a try. It's I give it a. That's all right. That's fair. That's okay. That's fair. It's a, it wasn't yeah. a bad watch. Yeah. I'm trying to uh, keep my ratings uh, unique, I guess. No numbers. What unique. happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it seems like a very quotable movie, too, yeah, for, the, for people who know I it. I quote it a lot. Nobody ever knows the quotes, <laughs> so I'm glad you will know now. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So I gave you your turn, Scott. Mm-hmm. Hubie Halloween. Okay. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. First of all, I specifically watched this movie to make you watch it. Oh, let okay. me put it that way. I did that to make you watch it okay. because I started watching it. I made it about fifteen minutes in. I had to shut it off because <laughs> I was like, I can't watch this fucking movie. And then the two days later, I was like, you know what? I need a I need a course of cinema at the mm-hmm. moment. I haven't made. I haven't updated my list. So I'm like, here you go, Scott. <laughs> Here you go. Let me watch this movie for that. Okay. I also watched it. 
partially because the Movie Guys podcast reviewed it recently, right. and I wanted to listen to that episode, but I don't want to listen to the episode if I didn't see the fucking right. movie yet. So, right. and I, I saw that I didn't listen to it yet, but now that I've seen this movie, now that you made me watch the movie. I'm going to listen to the Movie Guys show, and I'll post it to our Facebook, so if you want to check that out, I'm sure it's wonderful. But Hubie Halloween, Adam Sandler, made for Netflix. Um, As all his movies are now. All his much. movies, yeah. He signed this deal, big big deal with Netflix, and all his movies come right to there. And actually, I, I this past Thursday when we did our trivia, which I was talking about, I actually went over to Deloney's house. Right, yeah. Yeah, we were there. We actually we didn't do it online. We did it from their place. And we were talking. We're just sitting around. His brother, Jack, who's been on the show before, Jack Deloney, he was yeah. there. He's in town. So we're having a good time. Social distancing. We're being safe. But we're still, like, visiting with each other. And they got to talking about Jim Carrey, how he was on Saturday Night Live playing Joe Biden. Yeah. Doing a really good job, by the way. I thought it was very funny. And I, I bring up, which I've mentioned to you, and I think I've said on the show before, how I used to love Jim Carrey movies when I was in, like, junior high and middle school. Like, Ace Ventura, The Mask, <clears throat> Dumb and Dumber. I fucking loved him. Now, as an adult, they don't really hold up to me. I'm sure there's people out there like, what are you talking about, Malenki? There's fucking great. That's fine. No, you're, you're absolutely right. His movies are very... Yes. Immature humor. It's yes. very. It's not smart humor for mm-hmm. the most part. It's in your face, right. outlandish humor, and that's what it used to be. And I brought up. We were talking about that. And they, they of course, gave me shit for saying that about Jim Carrey. And I said, honestly, guys, I feel the same way about Adam Sandler. Again, I loved Adam Sandler, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore. Those were two. I loved those. I can quote those <clears throat> movies till I was blue in the face when I was in eighth grade. And now I'm kind of like. How many times can he do the Bobby Boucher, Little Nicky, Hubie Halloween voice in a movie and we still laugh about it? Yeah. Like, he does that same, like, <coughs> mentally handicapped voice. And it's kind of like, ooh, this is 2020, Sandler. You gotta... In fairness, he does do... He does that less mm-hmm. these days. It seems like he's doing the more... He does, obviously, like, the grown-up style humor and stuff like that where where he's, like, playing, like, a family man. He's got his friends... Mm-hmm friends and stuff like that they come to me it's fine but he does occasionally throw out the serious films like i i don't know if you saw in cut gems i haven't watched it i have not seen everybody's talking how great everybody he says is it's it. great like he I does watch it. i kind of like adam some of adam sandler's serious stuff because i think he he can be i'm not gonna say he is but he can be a good actor i think mm-hmm. he's obviously i don't know if you would consider him a comedian because I don't know if he's ever actually done like stand up on oh, stage. Oh yeah, he's a comedian. Yeah. But you say, okay, I I, I didn't yeah. know because I've never I mean, seen it. I've never his, seen any of any of the stand up. He got his start doing comedy, but then he got the gig on Saturday Night Live, and the rest was history. Yeah. So, um, I have enjoyed some of his more serious, like Fifty First States. That's that's a somewhat like that more one. serious. It's got some comedy, but some more serious. Mm-hmm. It's an enjoyable rom com mm-hmm. so, for the most part. I haven't seen. A lot of his more serious stuff these days, but I kind of, from what I've heard about Uncut Gems, I do kind of want to go back and watch that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know, like when? What is the last Adam Sandler movie that you saw that you enjoyed? That you were like, "This is good. I kind, I like this movie." Ooh, that I enjoyed. Yes. I watched the murder mystery one on Netflix when it first came out. I, I don't not, know if I saw that. I, I didn't. I, I didn't. That. Didn't care for it. Um, <clears throat> No, I did not see that one. No. Wow, it's been it's been a minute since <laughs> there's been one. I never watched the Grown Ups movie. Oh, I know the last Adam Sandler movie that I enjoyed was Hotel Transylvania. You like those movies? I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. It was a it's a kid. I movie. don't mean yeah. to insult your taste, yeah. but that I I, I didn't hated see, those movies so. Much. I didn't see two or three. I didn't see two or three, but I enjoyed the first. I watched it with my kids, and that's a whole. You look at it from a different perspective when you watch it with your kids. So, I think maybe the last Adam Sandler movie I enjoyed that I have seen, the the last one that I actually enjoyed watching was probably Click, and it wasn't a wow, good. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't a good movie. I'm not gonna say it was a good movie, but it had a lot of good parts. I love 
It was sort of sci-fi in the sense it had a remote that controlled his life and controlled time, basically. Mm-hmm. You could see the future and all this stuff. But there was one moment. There was one moment in the movie that made me actually kind of enjoy it. It was the. It was towards the end when he was coming to the end of his life and he was in that hospital and he was like in the rain and he was surrounded by his family and shit like that. And he was kind of like saying his goodbyes because he was dying and all this sort of shit. And he realized that his use of the remote has basically skipped his entire life and it was emotional. I was, That scene made me be like, Adam Sandler's a pretty good actor. That kind of made the whole movie for me. Like it wasn't just a jokey end at the you know at the at the end of it. I was like it was very it was a little emotional a little bit. So I was like, all right, I can I can get down with this movie a little bit. That might have been the last one. And Click was back in two thousand six. Yeah. So that yeah. tells you that's fourteen years ago. Been a minute. Been a minute. Um, but anyway, we're not talking about those movies. I did no. want to ask you what you thought of what the last Adam Sandler movie you like. But what did you think about this one? Hubie Halloween. Hubie Halloween. They are, I heard they are making a sequel, by the way. Just so oh, you know, really? I heard they are making a sequel. So. so, when I watched this, I was kind of out of the Halloween mindset. I, I'm already moved on to Christmas. I put my motherfucking Christmas tree up I know, today. I gave this to you very late. So, But that's okay, that's okay. So, that didn't really do it for me. And at the beginning, I, I feel like the movie improved as it went on. Early on in the movie, it was a giant circle jerk to all of old Adam Sandler stuff. A little bit, yeah. It was so much of a callback to so many other things he's done. What did, well, what did you think about the very beginning with Ben Stiller as the uh, yeah. night nurse right. uh, in the mental asylum? Did right. you find that enjoyable? Or he played you, or the you... same character he did in Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you find it enjoyable or were you groaning like, oh, this is like kind of cringy? Yeah, probably more of the latter. I mean, it wasn't a deal breaker by any stretch yeah. of the imagination, but I'm like, oh, is this where this is gonna go? And <clears throat> and there was a, there was a lot of those right away. That wasn't the only one. I'm trying to think of the other. One. I mentioned his voice. The O'Doyle. Vo- O'Doyle. O'Doyle. Made the an Doyle appearance. was the one. Yeah, the O'Doyles. His voice that he uses is fucking water boy. It's it's like it's a also mixture, little Nicky. It's a like, mixture of like I think if it's a mixture of uh water boy with like the tone of happy of billy madison like when billy madison would do his like dumb like right when he does voice, the voice yeah like when he does it's like a mixture of those a little bit yeah i mean how many times do we need to see adam I, Stiller do that i voice? guess when you have like a shtick you kind of stick to it and, so. and i guess jim carrey has that too like how many times is jim carrey going to literally talk out of his butthole yeah like, exactly it, to, to a 12-year-old, that's hilarious, okay? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Hubie Halloween. Um, the the love interest was the same lady who was the love interest in Happy Gilmore. Yes, she was. She's in Modern Family. She is gorgeous. Love her, Amazing. By the way. She's love great. Her. I don't know about you. I didn't believe the love interest for a second. It made no sense to me. No. He writes, produces directs and stars in these movies i know so. but i don't think any woman i'm just in happy it wasn't drew barrymore because god knows he puts drew barrymore as the love interest in every movie yeah he, he, so, he used to, so. <laughs> there's that um but yeah there was some fu- there were some parts that made me laugh there were some parts that made me cringe uh the radio part with Shaq. yeah i love Shaq, but that was just what <laughs> Yeah, it was overly ridiculous. Yeah, o- it, was overly. Ju- it was just there to put like a celebrity in the movie. Uh, and I did hear, there's a fun, and this this part did make me laugh in the movie because it was so true. But then I read more about this online. So the scene where they show the news clips. Yeah, and every every about, female yeah. news anchor was dressed up as Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad. Yeah. And that's so funny because a couple years back, every girl for Halloween... Dressed up as Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad. There were girls I saw on Instagram that uh, people I know who dressed up for Harley Quinn for Halloween this year. This year, yeah. Yes. So I I, I agree I agree with that that it's still going. But even if you go back a couple years, it was like every girl dressed up as Harley Quinn. Even girls as the Margot Robbie Harley Quinn. Even girls that could not pull off the Harley Quinn outfit. Yes. Dressed up as Harley Quinn. Oh, very many, very very many, very very many. So the fact that they, they put that in the movie kind of made me chuckle because that was, it's, that was funny, it's yeah. accurate. But the one anchor, so there was the there was the anchor at the desk. Yes. Then there was the one the, the meteorologist for the weather, and then there was the 
on site, anchor. the field anchor, right? The one who was the in studio anchor, she's a real news anchor yeah. in like the Boston area. Yeah. Did you hear about this? I did hear about this, yes. She lost her job because she was in this movie. And she didn't even do anything raunchy or language oriented or anything like that. She was literally just like an anchor and it was a little jokey about it, but she was literally just an anchor and apparently it violated something in her contract. Her contract, yes. Yeah. So. And, and she was cool about it. I, I read her tweets and she wasn't bitter. She wasn't salty or sour grapes or anything. She was like, you know, I messed up. My contract said I wasn't allowed to do this and I was unaware and I did it. So they had every right to do what they did. And I'm very grateful for them for giving me my shot. And do. And I'm like, she handled that like a pro. Like yeah, she's she going to go get another job. But it just it just kind of sucked. Like she's just it doing. It does. Yeah. I know. It's Yeah. It's not like the movie was controversial in any way. Yeah. I mean, so. Adam Sandler has had some pretty raunchy films. And, you know, this isn't this one This isn't of one of them. No. Yeah. This, this is... I wouldn't say it's a kids movie, but yeah, you can take your kids. You can if you're if yeah. you're sitting at home mm-hmm. and you've got toys in your living room and your kid can play, mm-hmm. you can easily put this movie exactly. on and it'll be fine because exactly. they're not going to he- they're, they're not going to bad- read what his mom's shirt said. Yeah, they're not going to pick up some, on that stuff. Which they bad, were funny. There's just some bad words that I'm sure you've said to your wife or you said to your husband they already were, in front of your kids. So they don't were. worry about that. Maybe see a marriage counselor. I don't know. Anyway, um, without giving anything away, I did like the just uh, give it away. Who gives a shit? The homage is... that uh, it, it it goes back to like a Friday the Thirteenth tip to the hat. Yeah, where his mom was the was the villain. I didn't like spoilers. That. I didn't you didn't like? like I kind of did. I I didn't like it because I thought it would have. I thought it would have moved made the movie better if Steve Buscemi was actually a werewolf, <laughs> and there was an actual supernatural element where like he was actually like. A person like maybe you thought throughout the entire movie that oh he's just a he's just a mental patient he's not real and then in the end it turns out oh no wait he's a real werewolf like it turns out it's real and that would have made like the movie better for me I don't I, I think like I didn't have a problem with the mom being like that and that's fine but I'm like it'd be cool if they Steve Buscemi is like I, I guess it was funny that Steve Buscemi and Rob Schneider was in it too as like his roommate basically Steve Buscemi plays a character who moves into the town. And he does a lot of really weird shit that makes you think he's like a werewolf, but it turns out he's he's uh, one of the people that escaped in the psych ward that Ben Siller was at, and it's a psych ward like his depart this area where he lived in in the uh, asylum was like specially designed for like people who thought they were werewolves. Rob Schneider's character comes off as kind of like a Michael Myers character. Yeah, he's he wearing escaped, like a bunny mask. He's wearing a mask, and he's just standing there and not saying anything the whole movie comes back to his hometown so you think he's gonna be the villain and he's the like the michael myers character but then they say whoops actually the villain here turns out to be hubie's mother yeah in, in a and the, rob steiner has like this really great heart to heart with rob with uh um steve buscemi's mm-hmm. character when they're sitting there they're like yeah i just put this mask on because i was trying to look for you man like i was trying to save your life man like you need to come back to the asylum with me. Like yeah. we got to get some help, man. Right, right. And that's it's like, what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what happened with that. Um, but like, yeah, like the first Friday the Thirteenth movie, Jason Voorhees wasn't in it. He was. There was no supernatural element. Yeah. It was his mother who was killing all the teenagers having sex at the camp, and that was kind of like what this was. His mother was getting revenge on all these people who bullied him. So I, I, I get that homage that they were trying to make to that movie. To both of those movies, really. Halloween and Friday the 13th. But I didn't love it. I didn't love the movie. So that's your thought of it? Yeah, it was like I, did, a, I didn't love you it. You think it's a watch if you got nothing sure. else better to do? Sure, yeah. So I it mean, wasn't like terrible. It wasn't like a no. waste of your time. No, it wasn't a waste of my time. Okay. But, uh, yeah, the ship has sailed on me in caring for Adam Sandler movies. And, and I agree with what you said earlier. Uncut Gems, I haven't seen it. And I've heard so many good things. I think I want to watch that before the jury's out on Adam Sandler, but yeah. But his Netflix movies and even his movies that I used to like when I was younger, they, they, that's not my bag anymore. It's not my bag, yeah, baby. It's not my bag. So let's go for next week's course of cinema, okay. Scott. Do you okay. have a do you have a pick for me? I do, I do, and I, I I mentioned this to you again. It was a while ago, and you told me you hadn't seen it. So hopefully you haven't watched it between now and then. If if you did, then Shit, I don't know what I'm going to do. But uh, <laughs> but I did check today to make sure this was still on the streaming service. And as of today, it is. 
I'm going to have you watch the movie Colossal. Colossal? On Hulu. I have not seen that. No. Okay. You're going to watch the movie Colossal. Okay, I'm going to watch the movie. And you said it's on Hulu. It is on Hulu. I checked okay. today before I came over to double check myself. I'm not going to make that same mistake twice. All right. Um, so I'm going to watch the movie Colossal on Hulu. Okay. The movie that I picked for you is a movie that's it's on Netflix. Okay. It is currently, I checked tonight. Okay. It is currently on Netflix. It's, it's a Netflix original, so it shouldn't go anywhere. Is it starring Adam Sandler? No, it's not. Okay. It's not. Okay. I've, okay. I've given you Adam Sandler for, for the month. So um, the choice that I have for you, the pick that I have for you, Scott, is Project Power. Project Power. Yes. Never I don't know it. if it is the is starring um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and uh, Jamie Foxx. It's okay. a science fictiony superhero kind of kind of boys kind of X Men kind of oh, okay. that kind of thing movie. It's okay. I, I I'll, spo- I'll spoil it for you. I kind of enjoyed it. Okay. I enjoyed it a little bit. So I'm going to give you Project Power. Okay. So for next week, Project Power and Colossal. That's right. Fossil on Hulu, Project Power, Netflix. If you want to get a hold of Four Distraction and you want to give us suggestions or tell us what you thought about that crazy Freddie Prince story, email us, distraction at gmail.com. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Search Four Distraction at Podcast FYD. We are also on SoundCloud and iTunes. Search for your distraction. Rate us, comment on us, like us, share us with your friends. The only way we grow is if you guys help us grow. And the comments and ratings actually do help us it tells the algorithm hey these guys are hot and heavy let's share them with other people we are also on spotify and google play search podcast fyd we are still a member of the be real network so head over to podbean and search for the movie guys podcast that is our official unofficial hub for the be real network also you can search for us on any of your third party podcasting apps also uh where i i have us on uh podcast republic on my phone you know whatever if you don't have a fucking iphone um we are still a member of the electronic media collective so head over to electronicmediacollective.com and listen to us on there tell them we're awesome and you love us that's right so scott how's it feel it, it's great to be together again until the next quarantine starts which might be next week